I just want to say thank you, thank you to everybody for attending this, um, um, the 2021 uh, NBSTRN network meeting. And my, me and my colleague Mike are happy to close out this meeting. Um, this it, it's been a very successful meeting. We've learned a lot of, from the different presenters and how they've used um, the NBSTRN to further their research efforts. So to, um, I'm going to start off the talk with um, discussing, finishing what Dr. Brown discussed yesterday about some of the tools and research that you can find on their new NBSTRN website. So yesterday, Dr. Brown discussed um, two of the tools, and I'm going to finish out with the third one. She discussed the longitudinal pediatric data resource, as well as the NBS virtual repository of states, subjects, and samples. And I will be discussing today the NBS condition resource. And before I get into that research, I just want to highlight that our website is viewable by PCs as well as smartphones and tablets. And the screen will respond to um, the different screen type you're doing and adapt to the different screen type that you are using. So let's get into this, the NBS um, CR. So the NBS Condition resource is a centralized resource of facts and, statist and statistics on both screening and candidate conditions. Currently, the tool features 118 conditions, which includes 61 of the recommended uniform panel conditions that are split into the core condition list as well as the secondary condition list. There's also 20 conditions from um, con 20 conditions that are being screened by um, certain state newborn screening programs, as well as 30. 37 conditions that are identified as candidates by NBSTRN. And this resource was built in mind to, to provide information to all types of NBS stakeholders, including um, the NBS programs themselves, um, researchers, clinicians, patients, parents, family, and advocates, and, and many more. And the way the source is built is that um, the condition is divided into different sections where you get a condition overview. There's um, some links for clinicians and researchers, as well as resources for the general public. And as we know today, there are many different um, places where you where people can seek information. And some of those information sources are very, are very reliable and some of them are not. So the purpose of this tool is not to reinvent the wheel and um, recreate things that other people have already created, but to provide a, a centralized location where different stakeholders can find information that is, is reliable. So um, in this research, you will find links to many credible sources, such as the Library of Medicine, as well as the NB, um, NC, NCBI resource mention, which is a resource that provides information on conditions that are linked to genetic diseases, as well as many more, as you can see on this screen. So now I'm going to just walk you through um, how you can use this resource. If you guys click on our website, you can walk through it with me, but I'll also try to demonstrate it a little bit at the end of this presentation. Um, so if you go to the website, it is nbstrn.org slash tools slash nbs-cr. And it, once you go to the website, you'll see a page. You can also click on our website and go to the data tools and select nbscr. And you'll see this page with this um, list of conditions. There's many ways that you can search through this long list. You can look at the go through the quick link where you click on a letter and it brings up the condition by the, the first name. Um, you can also um, click on a filter. We have two filters that you can click through. You can look at all the conditions by nomination status, which is the RUSP core, the RUSP secondary or candidate condition. You can also filter by the ACHDNC classification, which is the organic acids, amino acids, um, fatty acid oxidation, hemoglobin, endocrine, and other. And lastly, you can also search by name if you know the condition. So you can just enter in the name of the search tool as well as the acronym. So I wanted to give a little bit more information about the candidate conditions on our list. Um, so as you all know, there's thousands of rare diseases um, that have a genetic component. And what we've done with this tool is we've selected specific conditions by um, criteria such as um, it was nominated to the RUSP but not approved, 
there is at least one or more states that are screening for this condition. It's not on the RUSP. Um, it is a focus area for specific advocacy groups. It's included in differential diagnosis of the RUSP conditions. Um, this is a condition that has neonatal onset, and there's been some discoveries or developments in new therapies or new interventions. Or this is a condition that's in um, neonatal childhood onset with a feasible newborn screening testing method. And as you can see here that I have um, was able to filter on the website by the candidate conditions. So now I'm going to take you into the um, information. So if you select on a specific condition, what is the information displayed? And the example that I'm using today is cystic fibrosis. So when you first select, um, select a condition, you'll get information from NCBI, the genome data viewer, and you can click on the gene and it brings up the page um, that gives you um, more information about the genome, as well as you get information, an overview of the condition and some clinical information. If you scroll down the page, then you're provided information for the researchers and the clinicians. You're provided information and a link to the MedGen website. Um, you're prov also provided clinical information, such as the ACMG ACT sheet, clinical characteristics, diagnostic, and management. When sc scrolling further down, you're then presented a section for active research and provided links to the clinical trials website, where you can look at specifics about cystic fibrosis, as well as NIH reporter website. And then last part of the page, is a resource for um, the general public. So we have links that um, to a baby's first test. Um, Genetic Alliance has a disease info search resource, as well as the US National Library of Med Medicine has the Medline Plus. And we've also added um, recently the resource from HRSA, where they have a newborn screening um, resource as well. And finally, if you have your own favorite condition that you like to um, read up on frequently. You can. This tool does allow you to bookmark your favorite condition. There's a, a button that you just click on and it will bring it up to the top of the page. And if you actually register for the website, each time you log on to this resource, it will bring that condition to the top of your page. So um, just bear with me. I'm gonna stop sharing for a while and I wanted to um, actually pull up the website. I hope you guys continue to see my page. So um, again, this is the MBSTRN new website. And as Amy pointed out um, during her presentation, I'm currently signed in, which you can sign in to, and your name will be displayed if, if you signed in. So if you come to the data tools, here are a list of the data tools and you can come to the NBSCRI and you can see the different conditions that are listed. I wanted to point out that we added a link at the top of the page that links out to your host, your HRSA newborn screening information center, where you can also look up information about newborn screening conditions. If you want to use the filter, you can just click on the filter. And this time I'm going to sort by RUSP. You just hit apply and it brings up all the, the um, RUSP core conditions. You can search for a specific condition. I am going to... I was going to, I'm clicking on congenital um, adrenal hypoplasia, and you see that it brings all the names up with congenital in there. And then you can click on the condition, and it brings up the, the specific information. So that is our, um, uh, that is the, the um, NBSCR resource. Please um, log on to that resource and put, provide us with any information. Um, if there's any changes to make it more user-friendly, please let us know. And now I'm going to switch topics for a bit, and share my screen again, and discuss another resource that we have, which is the National MBS Pilot Monthly Pilot Study Webinars. These are webinars that we host each and every month. They're always the, and this should say the first Thursday of each month at 2 p.m. So mark your calendars so you can attend. And we usually use a Zoom, the same Zoom link for each call. During these calls, we have a standing agenda where we have um, the welcomes and introduce new people to the call. Um, we get updates from 
pilot um, from states that are conducting pilot studies or have completed pilot studies. Um, but we also have get updates from other states as well. And if you're interested in giving, uh, being added to the agenda and you want to give a monthly update from your state, please give, please contact me and I can add you to the list. And then finally, we get updates from our partners such as New Steps, APHL, as well as our own updates. These calls started um, historically by um, providing information when SCID was added to the rest. But now they've tr transitioned to the other conditions such as Pompeii disease, MPS1, XALD, and SMA. And now we also get um, updates about other conditions that are being piloted such as homocysteinuria, paroxysmal urocycles disorders, as well as Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And the information that is provided, the highlights from these calls as we discuss, each state reports out the number of infants or specimens that are being screened, the screen positives or the true and or the true positives, which gives us a little bit of an estimate on the incidence in each population, the screening condition and any challenges that we have with that condition. Um, for some, in particular for SMA, we've been getting some information about treatment and clinical ma management. And recently on these calls, we've been discussing genetic variants and how that has affected the newborn screening. Occasionally, we have presentations from, um, from a select few. We've, in the past, we've had a um, presentation from the Mayo Clinic on the CLEAR tool. We've had presentation from Cure SMA about the national outlook on how newborn screening for SMA is going, as well as two pilot studies for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And I just put this slide, this figure up um, on the slide to show that these calls are, the purpose of these calls is for the um, newborn screening community and stakeholders to learn about the conditions as they're being implemented. Um, historically, this purple line as we know, is, is SCID. And as we know, it took about 10 years for all states to start screening for SCID. So with the other states, where are we where are we at and how are we doing with them with Pompeii and PS1 XALD? How are the states doing with adding them and what are the challenges? So please join our calls. But if you happen to miss them, you can always catch them on the MBSCR YouTube channel. They are posted there after um, a week after this, the, the meeting is over. So now I'm going to hand it over to my colleague. Um, uh, Mike Hartnett. Thank you so much, Dr. Taylor, and thank you so much, everyone, for being here. And extra kudos for uh, sticking it out until the very end of our summit here. Um, uh, I'll be walking you through my role with MBSTRN as it pertains to the LPDR, um, specifically pertaining to the Duchenne muscular dystrophy pilot happening in New York State. Um, as well as developing question and answer sets for New York State's long-term follow-up program, and as well as survey development that just illustrates the capability of MBSTRN to anyone willing to utilize or work with us. So next, uh, next slide, please. Uh, service that MBSTRN provides is working with pilots. So what we do with the DMD pilot is we track the pilot data. To get to this point, we worked with MBSTRN worked with multiple stakeholders to develop question and answer sets to capture specific data on DMD. We have also been tasked to receive, aggregate, and display enrollment, screening, referral, and diagnostic data. And uh, the, pilot, the pilot steering committee has access to view monthly data dashboards for on our MBSTRN website to really show the pilot progress. So if you Go to the website, and if you go to the next slide, I just wanted to kind of orient everyone as it pertains on our website to find these data dashboards. We have a specific spot for newborn screening pilots under the resources tab. Next slide. And when you click on the newborn screening pilots, it'll send you to this page where we display the current pilots that MBSTRN is working on, and that's DMD for right now, um, and then next slide. And then at the top, if you this is just scrolling down a little bit further down the page on our website, it says click here to access this, the data dashboards. Um, that's password protected for members that have access and granted by the project. Um, but if you look 
even down at this um, at this image right here, we like to think at MBSTRN that we have a role as as far as pilots are involved. We have a role in every single um, all five of these blocks right here. Uh, but if you if you have access and you click on the link above, um, next slide, Jennifer, it'll take you to these monthly and the monthly data snapshots. So we have enrollment as cumulative totals and also broken up into the hospital systems. That's the way that the pilots designed and I'm sure all of you have heard about that earlier on in the, in the summit, next slide. And then we also have their screening data and you can add, as you go through on the web page, you can we all we display as well as you can download previous months data so you can keep track of all the numbers as they come in. Next slide. And that's that's pretty much the functionality for MBS TRN as pilots. And I know we want to grow in our capability with assisting with data visualization and really helping uh, implement conditions onto the RUSP or make really drive home a case as to why they might be a candidate for newborn screening. Um, but also we do that for other conditions and we really use the longitudinal pediatric data resource as a ground level standardization as we create new uh, question and answer sets. So the LPDR house houses robust amount of question and answer sets. For example, the New York State long-term follow-up program has utilized existing data sets and MBSTRN is working to standardize and distinguish additional data sets, specifically metabolic disorders. The use of these existing data sets aids with data standardization, allowing for more data to be captured and ag aggregated, aiding in character characterization of rare disease. MBSTRN has been also been a part of multiple expert work groups to develop standardized surveys. We've worked with the NIH and NICHD to develop to develop a survey that was distributed internationally to characterize Down syndrome cohorts and try to um, define phenotypic and genotypic data points as well as define comorbidities associated with some of those findings. And as well as we've worked with parents, advocacy groups, expert groups with the DMD pilot to really, we've developed surveys to ask the parents how they feel about the screening process and the diagnostic odyssey and everything like that. So we've worked with all sorts of different backgrounds in developing these surveys and we hold on to them and try to stick, keep them as standard as possible, but can tinker and make uh, study specific. So if you're interested, feel free to reach out. Uh, if you're working, if you're interested in working with MBSTRN to create a data set or a survey, you have my email right there and um, thank you. Great, thanks Mike, thanks Jennifer. Um, so Jennifer, just a quick question. If somebody wanted to suggest a condition or a series of conditions for us to include on the website, how would they do that? Sorry, I was muted. Uh, I think actually, if you if they if they want if there's a condition that a, a person is, is interested in, um, they could email myself, and uh, and it would be helpful if they had some of the information about the um, condition read, readily available because it does take us some time to put the this together for the website. But there's a contact button this button on the website that they could reach out or, or which goes directly to our MBS TRN email address, or they can re reach out to me um, as well. Great, thanks Jennifer. Um, and Mike, can you talk about what has been one of the biggest challenges of coming up with these long-term follow-up data sets? I know Dr. Swoboda talked about including standardized measures like the Bailey and other things that you know have lots and lots of question sets. Um, is there anything that you've learned in your work with really the experts in each disease as you've built these longitudinal question and answer sets? Yeah, I think um, the biggest challenge I would say would be kind of getting, I know everyone's really focused in on their work and what they're doing and they're very busy. Um, getting with establishing data sets, it's really semantic and getting everybody on the same page of like, 
their data definitions and everything like that. It, that's probably the most challenging, I would say, but it's it just takes work of getting on the same page, but not all clinicians and people working hard to work with patients have time for that necessarily. So it can be slow sometimes, but as long as the communication's there, I feel like it's, it's very effective. Great, thank you. Uh, well, thanks Jennifer and thanks Mike for a great tour of the new membership sites and these tools. Um, I know there'll be lots of great updates in the future.